Good evening, everyone. Good evening. That's nice. Echo back to me. Um, for those of you I haven't met yet, my name is Alex, and I, along with Richard, hold the title of the best men today. Thank you. That is a great honour, and I speak for both of us when I say I'm very grateful. And Sam, you have excellent taste. <laughs> he doesn't! <laughs> Speaking of best men, actually, what I wanted to start with, and I've just remembered, is um, those of you who are on the stag do, where are they? Where are the stag people? Hi. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you remember, but we had a little competition. Obviously, it'd be a day for one. On the day of the stag. Um, which was great, and I'm sure everyone ask anyone from the stag what happened, and they can tell you about it. Um, we what? No, no. Thank you. But there were some winners, there were some winners, so I would just like to award a small prize to James and Richard, who are the winning team by a country mile. Um, here you go. Could we have a, a small round of applause for them? Not, not enthusiastic. <laughs> <laughs> they did extremely well, it was excellent. And also, I have two small prizes for my favourite video of the night, which was from Nathan and Rachel. Um, so if you'd like to come up here, and if, Rachel, if you pass this to Nathan as well. It, it, it was terrible. Like, it involves my face. I can explain them as well, so it's going to be very embarrassing. Oh, yeah. Play the video! <laughs> <laughs> I want to see the video! Anyway, anyway, anyway. Any not to the children present. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I hope you're all having a lovely time in Brian and Judith's magnificent garden. Yeah. Looks like a lot of hard work has gone into making this such a special venue. Uh, and I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say they've done a brilliant job, so well done to everyone involved. Let me tell you a little bit uh, about my experience of knowing our charming groom, my old pal Samuel David Martin. <laughs> I first met Sam a little shy of 18 years ago when I joined Pittsford School, where Richard and Sam had been attending for a few years before I arrived. Our friendship really grew out of the fact that we we're both Northampton Saints fans, and out of a stadium of some 15,249 seats, it transpired that we were sitting right next to each other, which was great. So we can hang out, watch rugby. <laughs> we can hang out, watch rugby, and talk about girls. So, through a shared interest and shared experiences, our friendship grew. I spent more time with Richard, and I was very grateful to have such good friends after joining a new school. While the three of us connected over computer games and literally connected with one another during martial arts practice or even on the sports field, we largely kept ourselves out of trouble during school hours besides a few playful scraps and the odd piece of late homework. Sam made his statement with his own particular brand of quiet anarchy. <laughs> I look back at pictures from the time we show Richard and Sam and I in uniform, the great big mop of hair, <laughs> wristbands and cuffs up our sleeves. I noticed Sam's wearing a cuff today, <laughs> carrying on, very good. Looking as if John Lennon, Keith Richards and Noel Gallagher had started a pop punk. <laughs> Sometimes this can happen with close friendships. We had a few moments where we could understand one another without even saying a word. For instance, I remember in a maths exam once, looking over to Sam to see if he had finished, and Sam, as if he knew I was about to look at him, gave a quick glance to see if Mr. Murison was still asleep, <laughs> pulled a face at me, and did this across the room. <laughs> that, was, that was very distracting in an exam, but he didn't, he didn't have to say a word. We both, we both largely avoided trouble at school. Um, in the final year, the closest we came to addressing down was Mr. Toon telling us that our free periods in the mornings were not for us to sleep in after a late night hour. Do you remember? Yeah, you remember that day. We walked into the office and he was just there. He was standing there, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we did manage a fair bit of party in that year, and even though Sam's sometimes uh, even though sometimes Sam's almost flawless fake driver's license uh, failed to work, which Brian actually laminated for you, I think. <laughs> just to make, just to try and get it. <laughs> Even though that sometimes failed, we could still get into clubs together, have a bit of a dance, and try and talk to girls. 
Anyway, after we got through our A-levels and both wanted a break, we decided to test our friendship in the most challenging way possible. Oh. We set off for eight weeks of interrailing around Europe together. <laughs> we made up the Eiffel Tower. We dressed up. Oh, we dressed up. Uh, <laughs> Gargoyles? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> 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 I found that in the attic. So many German people talking to us, and we were just like, uh huh. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what they're saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we, we dressed up, fashing, and we made it all the way to Madrid before we'd had enough of each other and wanted to go home. <laughs> <laughs> we still went out into town together the very next day. Um, once we went off to uni, I remember the conversations we had over MSN at the time, where Sam told me that he had met Izzy, and it seemed pretty obvious pretty quickly he had found the only woman he wanted to talk about. Oh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you guys have done, you've done quite a bit of travelling together. Uh, I think it's fair to say you both got the travelling bug. And um, I had a particular memory of when you were doing long-distance relationship in America, uh, and Sam told me that uh, in order to combat the distance between you, that you would call one another on Skype and then put on the same film so you could both watch it together 2,000 kilometres apart, which I thought was adorable. Uh, I think you'll agree as a testament to their interest in sharing with each other. <laughs> so, Sam and Iz have been joined by two beautiful kids. You only need to spend a few minutes with Max to see immediately that he has inherited the charm passion and quick wit of both of his parents. Yeah, I see you smiling. <laughs> and Lyra, who is following suit, has already mastered the skill of shooting a withering look at her dad when he's being a bit too silly. <laughs> My mate Sam has steered himself very much in the right direction. I'm very grateful to have him as a friend for his steady companionship, his caring nature, and his inexorable ability to find himself in the right place. It was that sense of direction that kept us together through the metro in Paris and across the trains in Europe. He was a great travelling partner for me, and I'm thrilled that his journey continues with his family today. So, to finish, I want to tell you about a time that Sam's excellent sense of direction completely failed him. <laughs> so, Richard, should we show the... We'll get, we'll get this out. All right, so this is a, a map, just as a visual aid. <laughs> So, yeah, going back, going back many years now, um, after we'd had a party... <laughs> as, I'm, as I'm sure you all know, uh, that's gonna happen when you're a teenager and you're on a night out. Sam, rather too drunk, possibly evading an argument, decided it would be best if he just got up and walked home. Now this concerned me a bit, because of course I was also drunk. It was very early in the morning, and Sam was living in Bedford at the time, which is about 22 miles away. So, so somewhat concerned, I decided I'd book a taxi, head down the A428, and try and spot him, and get him back to mine for toast and marmite. <laughs> now, I'd been in the taxi for a good 15 minutes, heading up this route, and Sam was still nowhere to be found. But then I got through to him on the phone. I said, oh, Sam! I found, I found you, whereabouts are you? And he was like, oh, I don't know. Oh wait, I can see, I can see a sign. Said, yeah, what does that say, Sam? It says, Althorpe. Althorpe, <laughs> <laughs> as you can see, is about five miles in the opposite direction of the A428. But we got him home in the end, and, and it was great. So I just thought I'd embarrass him with that little story. That's all I have to say. Thanks ever so much for listening to me. I'd like to, I'd like to pass over now to Sam. Is there anything else? Rachel, yeah, Rachel's um, in a speech now. Thanks for coming. Hello. 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 So hello everyone, for those of you who don't know me, I'm Rachel, um, and I am reading off my phone because my sister forgot to print this out on paper, so I do apologise. Um, I have the great pleasure to be Izzy's Maid of Honour. Technically my title is Matron of Honour, but I turned 30 earlier this year and I'm not doing the old lady terms, so we'll stick with Maid. Um, so Izzy asked me to do a speech, partly I think because I got her to do one for my wedding, so this is complete payback. Um, I've known Iz for almost two decades, which sounds terrifying, but it's true. Um, 
And it's safe to say we've been on some adventures over that time. From the very beginnings at her 12th birthday party, watching Jurassic Park, the third one, um, with me insisting that I wasn't scared and merely telling her about how they made wounds appear on film at that precise moment because I would forget to tell her about it later on. Um, through to celebrating our GCSE results by doing some pretty impressive underage drinking, uh, followed by followed by some even more impressive pretending we didn't have hangovers the next day. Um, to travelling to Buffalo, New York, where I perfected the art of ice skating down some steps while trying to smoke a cigarette at the same time. <laughs> Through to too much tortuga rum in the Bahamas, far too many drunken evenings anywhere and everywhere, and my complete and utter obliviousness to the fact that it's, ve it's a very weird detox when you can't eat sushi or drink at the same time, and it's probably likely your best friend's pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> On this last point, I'll always remember the day that Izzy and Sam informed me they were going to be parents to the bestest guy in the entire world, Mr. Max Taylor Martin. Thank you very much. Um, my husband, Will, and I were meant to be meeting Izzy and Sam at uh, Sam's old restaurant, Otto's, as Izzy was about to embark on, I think it was six months? possibly longer, to stay uh, with fellow bridesmaid Amelia in Paris. And we had trudged all the way to Notting Hill, only to find that Iz was unwell and wouldn't be joining us. Now, this was after a long day at work and a slog over to the other side of London, and it's fair to say that I was a tad annoyed at being let down at last moment. So off we go back home, me in a sulk, only to find when I get off the tube a Facebook message from Samuel explaining that Izzy was sick, but it was more likely to do with the fact she was pregnant rather than anything else. <laughs> Cue me calling Sam all sorts of names, insisting <laughs> to Will that he must be having me on, followed by a moment of complete terrible two-star stropping. <laughs> we know those. Uh, despairing to anyone who would listen that my life was over as, who would I drink cocktail with now? Fast forward a couple of months and my shock had turned into full-on excitement as I boarded an overnight bus to visit Izzy in Paris. If that's not love, I'm not sure what is. Too skint to get the Eurostar or fly, so instead spent almost nine hours on a bus to reach her. I arrived dishevelled, tired and smelly, and waited to see her come and pick me up. About ten minutes later, I saw a large stripy belly followed with an Izzy attached. <laughs> but that's one of the things I love about Izzy so much. Despite massive changes in personal circumstances, like becoming somebody's mum. She's never let anything stand in the way of her doing what she wants. She's continued with her, she continued with her plan to live in Paris and even though it ended up being a shorter period than planned, she did it anyway, no fear, no hesitation. Her tenacity and strong word nature make her a force to be reckoned with and she certainly lives up to the fiery red-headed stereotype. <laughs> but she's also incredibly kind, thoughtful and a rare example of what a proper friend should be. So it's fitting and proper that she's found someone who looks after her like the special unicorn that she is. <laughs> I remember when she first told me about Sam, a boy in her English class at uni who she thought was quite nice. <laughs> when I first met Sam, you could tell he couldn't quite believe his luck at getting the girl, and then the crushing realisation that also meant having to put up with me. <laughs> but over the last 12 years, almost, the three of us have certainly had some laughs, as well as the occasional sore head. As a couple, Iz and Sam have built a wonderful family with their gorgeous children, Max and Lyra. I'm also going to do a little bit of a personal thank you here. I apologise if I get blubbery. Um, I want to thank them both for their true act of friendship not too long ago when my daughter Isla was born. Um, today, two years ago, in fact. <laughs> so, um, Isla was born a little premature. She was six weeks early. Um, it came as a bit of a shock, needless to say, and she had to stay in the hospital for a couple of weeks. So Izzy and Sam arrived at my house so that Izzy could come and meet her for the first time. Uh, I'm not going to look at you because I won't cry. Um, <coughs> they came armed with food so that Will and I wouldn't need to worry about cooking after long nights at the hospital. Sam tidied and cleaned the house so we didn't have to, and they brought hugs and love, which made Will and I so grateful to have such amazing friends in our lives. No. So thank you. <laughs> I remember after Iz and Sam had been together a few years, I realised that they, they have what I would define as relationship goals. <laughs> they've always been so comfortable just to be together, so grateful for the mundane and the exciting times they've shared, accepting of each other's merits and faults. They complement each other, and most importantly, they make each other and their fantastic children so incredibly happy. <laughs> so, please can we all raise a glass? 
from my favourite little family in the entire world, Izzy and Sam and the Taylor Martins. So I think Sam's going to come next. Sam? Sam, you take the mic off and walk around. Yeah, yeah, I'm totally going to do that. <laughs> usually, usually by now at a wedding, there's been a dud speech, so, you know, like, the groom is... Yeah, thank you so much, Chris. So usually the groom's, like, off the hook, so he can just be like, yeah, thanks. All right, OK. <clears throat> Oh, I've still got a tear in my eye. Right. <laughs> Hello, folks. Uh, thank you all ever so much for being here today. Uh, some of you have just nipped from down the road in Ramsgate. Uh, others have come from the other side of the world in Sydney. Uh, and it means so much to me and Izzy to have you all here celebrating our big day. Now, my apologies if this speech is a little bit rusty because I'm not the chattiest bloke, in case you've not noticed. Uh, in fact, might this, this might be the most some of you have ever heard me speak. <laughs> <laughs> actually, conversely, I am actually all right with public speaking, thanks to Mum making me do uh, speech and drama lessons at age five, and, uh, and, the, and the various school plays that we did, uh, mostly with Alex, who tended to steal the show, and I was like the somebody comedy sidekick. Lots of, you know, shuffling across the stage and looking really gormless, which didn't come that difficult to me, if I'm honest. <laughs> Traditionally, the groom's role is to carry out the many thanks to all the people who have helped us out over the years. Uh, in particular, I would like to thank Rachel as the maid of honour, who has done such a fabulous job of holding things together, especially yesterday, when things were not going that well. Uh, <laughs> I would also like to say happy birthday to her daughter, Isla, whose birthday we have 100% hijacked by doing this. Uh, the, there will be a candle in a brownie at some point for her, once I have found the candles. Uh, I'd also like to apologise to my dad for allowing him an hour on his birthday to celebrate before making him carry on in the garden. He, he opened his presents as quickly as he could, he ate a donut, and then he went back to work. <laughs> right. <laughs> right, I could probably thank each one of you all for the things you have done for us over the years. But that list is extensive. Instead, I'm going to ask for some audience participation here. If I say a statement that you think correlates to something that you, uh, correlates to you, I want you to put your hand up. Uh, if you don't, no, 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 it's fine. If, if you don't put your hand up, I might prompt you to. Uh, hands up if you have picked one of us up from an unsavory location at an unfavorable hour. <laughs> Uh, uh, okay. uh, my dad picked me up from Victoria Station after a Biffy Clyro concert where I had failed to miss, I I'd basically missed the last train and was trapped with scary people who wondered why I wasn't in the army. Uh, and he drove all the way from Northampton to Victoria, took me home to Ashford and then drove all the way home and then went to work the next day. Uh, Richard, when I had a bad fall uh, and, and hurt my face quite badly, drove me to the A&E. Uh, Wendy has picked me up on numerous occasions at numerous <laughs> unspeakable places. Uh, so yes, thank you. Uh, hands up if you have cooked us a meal. There you go. Right, see that... I, I've actually realised that a lot of people don't like to cook for me because as a chef they seem to find it a little bit intimidating even though I'm not actually that good at what I do. Uh, so if you have cooked me a meal over the last few years, all for is, uh, I want to say thank you because it really means a lot to us uh, and it's nice to be taken into your arms, you know. Uh, hands up if you've been there to take care of us when we were sick. 
Yeah. Uh, I think Kim and Jan should both have their hands up for that because uh, they have both filled a role in Easy's life that. <laughs> Sorry. That. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> I was going to hold it together. Right. There is a notable absence here today. Uh, I never met Izzy's mum. Uh, because, you know, she passed away at an early age. Uh, but I know her through the wonderful women in Izzy's life. And I can see how they have stepped into the role of her parental figure on both sides. And they have just done a wonderful job, you know, and they mean the world to us both and the kids. Uh, Mally's Bar, I don't know if you've noticed that my little innocuous sign, I'm sorry, it's not great. I, my fire pen broke halfway through making it. Uh, it Mally was Izzy's mum, that was her nickname. So that's just her little tribute at, the, uh, at this wedding. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, hands up! Hands up! If you were there in the first weeks after we had one of our kids. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Mum and Dad, we basically lived with you for the first year of Max's life. Uh, it tested the bounds of our relationship to the limit because <laughs> we didn't know what we were doing, and we were living in your loft, and we were young and a little reckless and. It worked out well in the end, and <laughs> we learned from you because when we weren't able to cope or when we needed someone to help, you were there to fill that gap. And you have continued to fill that role with both our kids. I mean, Lyra's upstairs asleep on Dad's bed right now, so. <laughs> okay, uh, hands up if Izzy or I have lived in your house for an extended period of time. <laughs> Uh, yes, we, we lived with Kim for a year in London. Uh, again, it probably tested the bounds of our relationship because uh, we are not the yeah we are we are not the easiest house guests. We we make a mess. Uh, we I was working very unsociable hours, uh, but you put up with us, and we ended up with two great cats who I have not seen once today. They are here somewhere, like, but they are not here. Like, they've, they've run far away. We may never see them again. Uh, Wendy, <laughs> Wendy is uh, Alex's mum, uh, Wendy and James. Uh, I spent numerous, <laughs> numerous days, weeks at their house as a teenager because we lived in a village a little bit out in the sticks and there was nothing wrong with it. You two have always felt guilty about it, but you know, <laughs> it was a lovely childhood. But as I got older, being able to go on nights out and have a loving, safe, warm environment to crash in afterwards, and my own towel, which you bought from me, was, uh, was just the best thing in the world. And you made me involved, otherwise I might not have necessarily been in the situations, I wouldn't have been there yeah, because I wouldn't have. Stories. Yeah, yeah, we wouldn't. We wouldn't have any stories. We wouldn't have been walking around Northampton in the middle of the night. No, exactly. Right. Okay, I've lost my place. Uh, <laughs> hands up if you were here yesterday helping us with the garden. <laughs> oh, where's Al and Jess? Are they gone? I don't know. Oh, there he is. Al. 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 And. Rachel and Will have done all the sound and helped us put things together. Al, if anything in this garden is wooden, there is pretty much a chance that he built it. He built this deck, he built the Hobbit house out of solid oak that he chipped into a circle. <laughs> Me and Dad were going to cut a piece of like MDF into a circle and Al kind of like rolled up his sleeves or perhaps even took off his shirt. And, uh, and he went to town on this garden and this garden is so much better as a result of him being in our lives. He built the gates, did everything. Uh, he's the reason that the children can roam free without the chance of them running off. Hopefully, at least I hope the gates are closed right now. <laughs> Well, yeah, I know. I mean, I mean, many people are in love with Al. I'm sorry, Jess. I don't know if you're aware of this. But... <laughs> All right, hands up if you're a cousin of ours who might not we might not see all the time, but whose company we treasure. All right. That that applies to both families. We have 
a numerous amount of cousins. Uh, they are spread across the globe. They live in Madrid, they live in Sydney. I mean, some of them live in London, and that seems like a very long way away sometimes. But they have always made a wonderful impact on our lives, and that's why you are here today. <clears throat> <sighs> Hands up if you let us throw a wedding in your garden despite the great level of stress. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mum and Dad, I can't put into words how grateful we are for you letting us throw this here. I know it has tested the bounds of our relationship. I keep saying that. Oh, wow. We have tested a lot of bounds. Uh, bonds, bonds, bounds, bonds. Yeah. Um, but it's phenomenal. You should be so proud and... It, look, look, just look at this, it's amazing. You know, thank you very much. Uh, and, and, and finally, on this bit of audience participation, hands up if we love you. Everyone's hands should be up. Yeah, yeah. Hands, everyone's hands should be up in the air because if you are here, you, that means that you mean something to us. I've always been a great believer in the old adage that it takes a village to raise a child. Because when it comes down to it, you are only as good as the support network around you. You are here today because you are our village. When we stumble, you are there to catch us. And if hard times darken your door, we will be there for you. Oh. Oh. Okay. <laughs> All right. Isabel, Izzy, is is Meister, Whiz Bang, Little Miss, Squelch, Tink. Uh, Hobbit. Hobbit, sorry. Well, sorry. It's all right, temporary pause. It's all right, I don't think the next sentence makes sense. We good? All right. Fate would have it that I would meet her my first week of university. And uh, due to my atrocious organisational skills, uh, at Kent you are meant to get a mentor and they're meant to show you around. I missed my mentor's appointment, so I tagged along with a friend to the weirdly named Golbenkian Cafe. I have no idea why it's called the Golbenkian. Uh, and this girl was there, uh, this redhead who was quite mysterious and who immediately captured my attention and she has bewitched me ever since. Now Izzy back then was quite a guarded individual a fiercely independent city girl who was clearly, clearly quite used to taking care of herself. But slowly over time, she opened up to me and the most beautiful and heartfelt soul was revealed to me. She has been part, my partner for almost 12 years and although a piece of paper we signed today makes it official, she has been my wife for much, much longer. Izzy has given me two of the funniest, independent, free-spirited children that I could ever have hoped for and it's helped me through some of the biggest highs and lows of my life. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> oh no, I've lost a page. <laughs> right, we'll, go off, we'll go off script. <laughs> uh, you are the most wonderful mum to Isn't Lyra, who... Oh, sorry. Yeah, this, see, this is what happens. I don't have a piece of paper and I've instantly forgotten her name. To, to Max, and, Max and Lyra, who have taken on all your positive traits and probably most of my negative traits. Uh, you fill my heart with gladness and I am proud to call you mine. I hope that you're proud to call me yours. Uh, I, think we'll, I think we'll end it there. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 
Well, if I break the habit of a long time. <laughs> um, is, uh, we met in 2008, I think. You know. I know. You have the best memory of anyone I've ever met. Yes, yeah, so I'll save Sam the blushes on explaining how we met. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you met. We can do that. We can do that. It's, it's been said a few times that about special memories that people have with each other. And in getting to know is, which has been a, a, a thorough pleasure, there have been a few moments that stand out. But every time that I've seen is, particularly with Sam, but every time I've seen it has been time well spent. Uh, I think that says more than just one or two special moments. Sam. <laughs> you know everything. You remember everything. Alex has forgotten. <laughs> it would be very easy to make jokes at your expense at this point. <laughs> There is a wealth of material that I could draw. Go on then. <laughs> in, in thinking about what I was going to stay, say, say about now, I was, I was thinking about is making an honest man of Sam. But of all the jokes that could be made at Sam's expense, that is not one that would fly. Because Sam is through and through an honest man. He's been honest as long as I can. I can I've known him, which has been a few years. Yeah. For a while. I don't think, I think I can speak for Sam. I don't think you could have found anyone with more grace and strength than Izzy. So, I'd like to raise a glass to the bride and groom who are far better than the sum of their parts for being with each other. Aww. To, what are your names? Iz and Sam. <laughs> 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 it's important as well to, to raise our glasses to those who can't be here, whether or not they're far away or whether they're right here, if only in spirit, they are here. So, to absent friends. To absent friends. And to Brian and Jude. <laughs> couldn't be here if it wasn't for you uh, I, and I know how grateful you are to have Sam in your lives and the gift that Izzy is to you but Sam and Izzy are just as lucky to have you so, to Brian and Jude and finally to, to everyone here this has been Sam said this but it means the world to Sam and Izzy that you've traveled from is it Australia? Yeah. yeah. Or just down the road? <laughs> uh, this is this is to you. So. Cheers. And that's it for the public speaking. <laughs> I don't know what the plan is next now, but just have a good time. <laughs> Good job. How'd you find that? It's probably too close. It's not focusing on your face. No, it's too close. You look like when I take my glasses off, what everyone looks like. That's, yeah. Uh, just by a show of hands, who's hungry? Uh, right, okay, so if I said the buffet was maybe in like an hour, would that, would that be alright? Okay, cool. We're just going off book now, so cool.